Hi, and welcome to Hypnotize Me, the podcast about hypnosis, transformation, and healing. This is Dr. Elizabeth Bonet, and I'm your host. This podcast is not a substitute for mental health treatment, nor should it be. If you need therapy or hypnotherapy, please seek a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so if you'd like to learn more about me, you can do that at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Now on to our episode. Hi, this is Dr. Liz and welcome to the podcast this week. If you're a first time listener, I'd like to welcome you and let you know that there's all kinds of free stuff over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. And to also ask you to leave a review if you like this week's episode, as well as share it with a friend. That's how the podcast grows and more and more people learn about hypnosis. This week, I am doing an interview with Kara and Tracy of the Soul Happy Hypnosis Program. I think you're really going to love hearing how this program developed. It is an online hypnosis program to help just regular people dealing with insecurity and helping them feel more confident and sure of themselves. And originally it was developed Originally, it was developed for real estate agents, actually, to help them make sales and feel more confident. And then it developed into a broader program that anybody could use. But I think you'll find their story and the journey to developing this very interesting. So let's jump in. Oh, just a reminder that there's a sale on the hypnosis downloads for January. And I'm going to read you a quote for my mindful eating and love to exercise downloads that someone bought recently. She gave me permission to share this quote with you. She said, purchasing those recordings has quite possibly been the best thing I've ever done. I've gone five days now without going through a drive through It's been almost just not even a thought in my mind to make bad food choices. I've struggled with this my entire life. And my mindset is so different this week. I am so thankful for this. So that's wonderful. I absolutely love how my hypnosis files are helping someone. That was just so sweet of her to send it and sweet of her to let me share that with you too. So thank you very much to Katie. All right, let's jump into this week's episode. I hope you really enjoy it. Hi, I'm here with Tracy Zaboral and Kara Hewitt, and they have a really interesting technique that I'm happy to talk about today. I'm really excited about actually jumping into this and seeing what it is and learning more about it. So welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. So let's jump right in. Let me just ask you a simple question first. I ask most of my guests is what was your first experiences with hypnosis? Interestingly enough, Kara and I, so Kara and I are business partners um, and we're both psychotherapists. We met at a hypnosis training, hypnotherapy training mm. about five years ago. Yeah. Or so. it's been that, been that long yeah. In, in our, in our field, I think they refer to it as hypnotherapy or, Mm -hmm. The word hypnosis is kind of converted when you when you get into the therapeutic realm from what we have. Well, you're both licensed mental health professionals, correct? Yeah, MSW. I'm MSW. Okay, I'm, Tracy, you're MSW, and Kara, uh, mental health counselor. Mental health counselor. So, in the state of Florida, we can call ourselves hypnotherapists versus hypnotists. Because right. hypnotists would mean that we don't hold professional license right. licenses, and all three of us do here. <laughs> so, so you met at this training five years ago. Then we did. We um, we we just uh, we were in this training. We were in, I guess it was three day weekend training. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Elizabeth, yeah. are you familiar with RRT? No. Oh, yes, I am. Rapid resolution therapy. Yeah, I did several <laughs> interviews about it actually okay. on the podcast. RRT. So you know, you get you get certified as a you know with the hypnotherapy, but specifically it was RRT. So, mm. so um, yeah, rapid resolution therapy for your guests, and 
you know, Kara, um, Kara was kind of just, you kind of showed up for some CEUs and I, um, had just kind of started to, I was trying to refocus my practice and wanted to just bring some new energy into it. And, uh, so that was really why I was, I had always been interested in, in hypnosis, you know, I'd always, um, referred people out to, you know, fellow colleagues who were doing hypnosis. I had just never gotten around to getting the training myself. So mm-hmm. I was really excited to do something new. Um, and Kara, I kind of cut you off. You were. No, it's okay. Same, same with me. I was looking for, for a new, new modality to use with my clients, um, in private practice and felt like. This is the natural um, next step for me. I'm trained in um, EMDR, which maybe some of your listeners are familiar with that. I'm sure you are. Mm-hmm. As well. um, so so I, I felt like this is a natural next step for me in terms of my career and, and, and new, new uh, understandings about where neuroscience was going and things like that. So I had that background and, and going in, I, you know, it really clicked for me to understand um, the, the subconscious mind and how it works. And uh, both Tracy and I met, um, found that we were on parallel lives, sort of where in terms of how many years we've been in the field and, and our interest and found that you know, we could work really well together. So that's kind of five years later, here we are. So you met there. Did you experience the technique yourself during the training? What happened is, I guess we ultimately went to two. So we even went to like the next level. Mm -hmm. um, A couple, it was like the next month. We just, when we met, we gravitated toward each other as like minded souls because, really, to just put it in simplest terms, we were really frustrated therapists. I have been in the field since the 80s. You know, my approach had been much more kind of more traditional talk therapy. Um, like Kara said, she was doing some EMDR and some and some different kind of newer modalities. But really, I was frustrated, and I just I had a feeling that hypnosis and you know addre- approaching it completely different could be really quite career changing if I really just embraced. I was ready for something new. I just felt like in my gut there had to be a better, easier way to help people. The, the old fashioned kind of traditional talk therapy, you know, there were just some barriers to success is kind of the way I saw it. I, I felt like the results were kind of inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, did beautifully. Others, it was just so painful and it would get drawn out. And then the progress that they made was, was often um, not sustainable. So, so anyway, Kara was having some of the same, you know, just some of the same frustrations. And so this RRT kind of stimulated our, our thinking and we jumped into to saying, Let, look, let's pull together a bunch of different modalities. We started researching we, everything we could get our hands on about the new breakthroughs in neuroscience, brain science. And we were thrilled, thrilled. I didn't realize how I had just gotten stuck in kind of an old, very old school, I guess, is the best way to put it. And what do you we were, mean? What do you mean got stuck in old school? I really did short term therapy, but it was more I was trained in the true psychoanalytic mm. uh, therapy in the mm-hmm. 80s, Michigan. You know, it was it's just what it was. It was actually pretty Freudian. And so, of course, I wasn't still doing psychoanalysis, but, but I, I hadn't segued into like energy exercises. Um, I was very open to it all, but I just hadn't hadn't done that. And I, I was thrilled. I, we, Karen, I couldn't believe the breakthroughs in neuroscience around the study of um, the mind with the subconscious, how our memories are held, how they're stored, and the exercises you can do to get to them. Mm-hmm. So how do you explain that to your clients and to people you know, coming to your website? Because let me tell the listeners that that Tracy and Kara have a online program that they offer. So that is part of what we're talking about today. So how do you explain the neuroscience to your clients and potential customers? Well, in the most simplest of terms, I think we can, you can think about brainwave states and how, of course, this is, this is classic hypnosis, and I know you know this more than anything, is that when you are able to lower your brainwave states, you're able to, then you, you're at the threshold of your subconscious mind. And going even further, 
um, with hypnotic inductions, um, which are counting down basically and, and lower your brainwave states, then you are able to access that subconscious mind. So that's the basis for accessing these lower brainwave frequencies, which are measurable. And that's the part that really excited us is the, the neuroscience behind this, that brainwave states are measurable and, and, and there are neuroscientists doing this now you know, throughout the world and we're really starting to understand um, these, these different frequencies and how they can be beneficial. So you're saying when you go into that lower brainwave state, which I've done a couple of mini episodes about that for the listeners around hypnosis is very similar brainwave state to meditation. Mm -hmm. So when you're going into that brainwave state, you're saying you can change patterns, access the neurons, or like really rewire the brain in that state much faster than you can in the conscious state. Is that correct? Exactly. So what we ended up ultimately doing is developing a, a, an actual technique, and it is really centered around what you just said, Elizabeth. We get people into that frame of mind where we can then access um, energetically. So, so what we what we came to understand the neuroscience behind it is that our memories are stored in the subconscious mind, and they're stored in the form of energy. And we now have ways, we now know that energy is malleable and can be manipulated. And there's, there's tools to do that. As someone who for decades was assisting people with their memories, but I was kind of dragging them through their memories. You know what I mean? We were, mm -hmm. we were, you know, we were going back to, to, to old memories that were, that were causing people to, you know, still have pain or whatever it is that the memories were still doing to them causing them to act in a certain way and feel a certain way about themselves. But we were doing it with the conscious mind. Now, all of a sudden, I mean, Elizabeth, it felt like the Wild West. All of a sudden, like, wait a minute, we can just go direct to where the memories are stored and energetically manipulate, reprogram the, the way the memories are held so that they don't have the same effect. And that, yes, that yeah, it does feel like the Wild West. Like, oh, <laughs> it really it's, does. Yeah. It's the best. I mean, it's just, you know, as, as therapists who used to kind of, you know, have to, like I said, like drag people through it to, you didn't want to do it, but you had mm -hmm. to relive the memory to reprocess. And as you process the feelings attached to the memory, eventually, you know, you would, you would process those feelings. You would come out the other side. You would be kind of desensitized eventually to that. But mm -hmm. sometimes that could take, you know, months, mm -hmm. weeks, months, maybe even years. And it, it was painful, right? Yes. Yeah. It is painful for people. What's coming to mind is um, Van der Kolk's book, the Body Keeps the Score, where he talks a lot about that process and how memories are stored and the neuroscience behind it, where they are really like in these little bubbles, a traumatic memory. Oh my saying. gosh. So we refer to them as clusters. Uh -huh. so we have like little accumulated clusters you know, over a lifetime of accumulated negative memories that tend to get stored a little bit more out front mm -hmm. um, as a, it's kind of like as a fight or flight kind of reason is why they're stored out front so that the, the system can kind of use those memories if they need it uh, to protect you. But I'm kind of getting off on a tangent. Really what happens is we end up looking at a, a scenario in front of us and we end up responding through a lifetime of accumulated negativity of similar memories. So like we, we say, like you've got a little cluster of fear mm -hmm. of, of negative memories that make you feel fearful, a little cluster of um, like grief a little cluster of insecurity, a little cluster of sadness, that if something gets triggered, so let's just use fear, some, you know, you've got a situation in front of you and it's making you scared. Well, now you're looking at the situation through the screen of an accumulated cluster of fear. Mm -hmm. And often then we call it like an overreaction or, or let's make it more of in a daily kind of scenario. Let's, let's use in, the insecurity cluster. You know, your boss is addressing you with something. You're feeling a little insecure. Your insecurity gets triggered. But now you're viewing it through, through an entire accumulated cluster 
of insecurity. Well, sometimes you overreact. You, you get into a panic. Mm-hmm. Crap! What you know? What am I doing wrong? Or what you know? And it turns into an overreaction. We we all know that feeling where it's like, what? Why the heck? Why am I responding like this? Mm-hmm. So so what we do? Part of the technique is that we go in and break up those clusters. That's the first part of the technique. We break up the clusters of negativity. Mm-hmm. And you're saying you can do that without someone having to re-experience those memories or accumulation of what happened. So in, in our training, of course, we understood, and I, of course, am trained in um, trauma, working with trauma and through hyp- hypnotherapy on our training was based with working, also working with trauma. So in our field, there, you can consider it big T and little t. Uh, big T would be the big traumas. That would mm-hmm. be rape and, and um, tra- abuse, things like that, which, which could be bigger traumas. The small T's, the small trauma, things like being bullied when you're at just simple traumas like that also are addressable. And they cause this, what Tracy referred to as these clusters as well. So what we have done in our technique is focus on these small T's, these things that just stay with you all your life, that you want to change, that you want to uh, make, a, make a difference for yourself in terms of, let's say, like she said, insecurity, that you have this nagging insecurity all your life and you want that to change. That is what our technique addresses, these smaller T's, mm. things that you just want to be a better person, a better parent, a better mother, father. That sounds like a, a stronger person, too, is one way to look at it. Like If you're looking at insecurities or getting triggered by fears sometimes or these smaller bits of ourselves that go on every day, you're looking at helping people feel not as insecure, not as fearful, feeling, um, let's put that in the positive for people, right? (laughs) Stronger, more emotionally stable, happier. The first um, group that we worked with with our technique were a group of realtors, and we were working with their performance. And we found they were having such incredible results by working with us. And we thought, how can we reach a larger group of individuals. First of all, we wrote a book, which is just about to be published here very soon. We're working on the final um, publishing parts of that. But then we thought, why not go ahead and deliver this by the means by which we all live our lives, and that's through the internet. So that's what we did, and that's where we are now in, in our technique. So what did you find that the realtors were facing? Insecurity. Yeah, I mean, really, I think, you know, as salespeople, um, you know, you want to really be able to go out and be confident. I mean, I think salespeople are always probably trying to address how can we increase our performance? How can we increase our um, our confidence? You know, how can we really go out there and be um, secure in, in our deliveries? And so it was really around insecurity. I mean, that really kind of became our universal theme, to be honest with you, is, is we help people get rid of their insecurities to the best of their ability. Uh-huh. So, you know, so that they're just better in their performance. Yeah. Like in their case, what were they insecure about? So, so for instance, and this kind of circles back to your, to your question a while, a while back, are we actually able to address this without making people relive their, you know, their traumas? So first of all, we're, we're dealing um, not with severe trauma. But second of all, yes, we would have them come up with, we have this in the technique, we have you come up with um, like three examples of negative experiences um, from various time stages in your life and developmental stages that would probably contribute to an insecurity. So let's just say it's, um, you know, let's say you had a a really strict um, critical father. Or let's say Kara brought up earlier, you know, you remember getting bullied on the playground in second grade. Or, um, you know, so these are just a couple examples of things that that uh, contribute to you feeling insecure. And by the way, when we address one memory, other memories that have a similar feeling all kind of get clumped together and get 
get, can get cleared out as well. So what we do have you do, you have to recount the memory. But as you recount it, we have you go through these, these exercises that, you know, happen in the course of, of one session. We do a couple exercises with each memory. And each exercise might be, what, like maybe under, you know, two, three minutes mm -hmm. long. And so although you have to recount the memory, you know, you don't have to re-experience it over and over and over. Um, mm -hmm. because we get right to the subconscious mind and start having you detach. There's one exercise that works with detachment. There's one exercise that kind of scrambles the way the memory is stored because we interrupt during the retelling of it. So, so for instance, as, as you interrupt the retelling, consistently interrupt it, every, every interruption, the energy starts going down a new neuronal pathway. Because like we were saying mm -hmm. earlier, energy, you know, this is, these memories are stored in the form of energy. And when you start telling the memory is, you know, anytime you start talking about something, your mind is understanding it in the form of electricity running down a neuronal pathway. So if you interrupt it, the electrical current kind of does a, does a, does a, an abrupt stop, starts, heads down a new neuronal pathway because we've just interrupted it. And if we interrupt it, say, you know, 20 times in the course of this retelling, it, it actually scrambles the energetic um, makeup of how that memory had been stored and how it is now stored. And in the process of doing that, it dilutes the emotional uh, intensity, the intensity of the emotions mm -hmm. attached to the memory. And the, and mm -hmm. people will just say, you know what? I, I, when, well, they, when they'll, I, well, they'll say, I just, I, I, I don't feel it anymore. Yeah. And, it's, and it ha mm -hmm. feel is the, is the key word here. It's, it has to do, the memory does not go away. Let's make that clear. But the emotional attachment to it is dissipated. And that is the difference. And that when we when we realize what was happening with these realtors and how they were just they were just letting go, just every memory just was it, we saw they could laugh about it, laugh about being bullied on the playground. Whereas before they would become emotional about it. Emotionally mm -hmm. negative emotions. And so when we realized this, we said, really, this is really good stuff. This is really, really important information for people to know and understand if they just want to move forward in life. And that's when we, that's when we went to work. And then, and then Karen, I got excited about what else we wanted to add into the technique. So the, the clearing was the very first piece and that came during those RRT trainings, some of that came directly. We tweaked it and made it a little more our own because those are mm -hmm. directly for tr true tra trauma and sexual trauma specifically. But it was a lot of the theory behind that rapid resolution um, technique that, that kind of um, influenced this clearing section. But then once we, you know, we were thinking, okay, so if we can reprogram it, why can't we program imprint positivity? Clear up the... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that is the, the clear benefit of hypnosis is you're not just clearing. It, it sounds really similar to this technique I, I do called core healing, which where we go in and we clear first, we see what's going on, but then we're implanting all these beautiful, wonderful, positive exactly. things in there. Yeah. Exactly. And that, so, so literally you are reprogramming. If you're changing the old program and you're, and you're putting in a new program, you are reprogramming. And we, we put a little something in there in the middle of it. So we've got the clearing exercise and we've got the, Mm -hmm. exercise. Well, in the middle is a session that's just very near and dear to our hearts because um, this is a little bit more of a spiritual piece where after we clear out the negativity, we get people in touch with their core. So it's more of a guided meditative kind of a session, but we're mm -hmm. guiding people kind of to their, you know, some people would call it their soul um, their their God self, their higher self. We we refer to it as your core or your super conscious. Mm -hmm. This super conscious state, um, we just really encourage that people are in touch with the part of them 
in their purest form. So before life's kind of programs got in the way, before experiences and and the teachings, like in my case, like I was raised in a really strict Catholic family. So the religious kind of dogmas of how I was raised, all of those things chip away at the pureness of where our strengths exist in their purest form. So anyway, we get people in touch with that because what we're trying to do is kind of more that that's the intuitive side. Get people to really be empowered to turn inward for no matter what their guidance needs are, whatever their scenarios are. If they're able to turn more inward and start to really trust, you know, that inner voice. Um, So that to us is a huge piece. You'll get them in touch with that inner voice and then do the reprogramming that we were all just talking about, that imprinting of positive scenarios. Yes. Yeah, I was just talking to a colleague the other day who's working in the hospital a lot. And so she has access to access and contact with a lot of medical doctors and researchers And she had said that piece of like bathing people in the positivity, bathing people in those new, more healthy suggestions in terms of them moving forward in their life is so important. And they're discovering that that's actually changing the expression of the genome. She's like, it really is epigenetics. And she's like, those are the brain chemicals going on. And when you do that, when you keep the client in that state and you really are literally changing the neural pathways. You are literally changing that genetic expression going on in their, I'm sure in their life. I'm sure some of your listeners, and I'm sure you are very familiar with the work of Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipp. Yes. These individuals are doing some really wonderful work in this field. And, and it's the way we see it, it's going to change the whole field of medicine eventually. And this becomes mainstream. It's, it may not be there yet. But mm-hmm. we'll be- soon and and when they start understanding this um you're right because it's science it's you know and it's a a really powerful healing karen i believe that for psychotherapy you know we're what all of this is doing and elizabeth what you do as well and what you just described with your colleague is we're all trying to finally bridge science with psychotherapy and, and, and with spirituality, many, you know, many of us are actually bridging all three and. Oh yeah. I, I've said many times on the podcast that I, I can talk all this science, but I really feel like it's a, a spiritual transformation that goes on for people. Mm-hmm. Like it, there's this other element that happens and that may happen online with an online program, but it's certainly in an office with somebody that, Absolutely. There's this spiritual piece to it that when someone is happier and living better and living through their higher self, however they want to identify that as, but I really believe that that's, that's creating this transformation in the planet, really in their interactions with people and as they move forward in life. Right. And then the ripple effect, of course, that all of that has. I mean, Kara and I, in our lofty goals, we love to say, you know, we are trying to assist in the healing of humanity one sub. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right? Right, right. Yeah. We're out to yes. humanity, you know? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I really believe that too. As someone, let's, let's, let's just, you know, make it concrete someone who's living in bitterness and anger and let's say road rage, yes. right? And then they come in and they say, okay, I know I have a problem. I want to work on this. I want to handle this better. And you work with them and you do the hypnosis and then they go out in the world and they're they're happier, peaceful, more friendly, you know, not chasing people down the road. (laughs) Like that, that really does create, it does create transformation, right? Like perhaps that's, that's one less negative interaction for everyone around them as well as for themselves. Exactly. And as they go about their day, if they're not spewing out that negative energy that other people are having to pick up, but they're really, you know, let's just say spewing out positivity, like you just said, you know, in the ripple effect, what a better, I mean, those little, those little actions really make a difference. They start to add up. It makes a difference. Absolutely. Yes. And then when you're talking about even in their relationships, their close relationships, their children, all of that gets transformed for generations. 
It yeah. does. You're right. I mean, that that that's the ripple effect. It starts in the home, your neighborhood, your community, the roadway systems. It's all <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. um, grocery store line you know it's it, it, it all it affects everyone and, and we've got to stop looking at ourselves as just individuals out there spewing hatred but, but be responsible for what what you emit and what you say in the world because that's that's the crux of the problems that exist now so let me go back to the realtors for a moment so let's say that they, they went through this program with, with you guys and I'm imagining a realtor that perhaps, you know, they have to deal with so many different types of personalities when they're showing homes, when they're talking on the phone, when they're negotiating with other realtors even. Right. So perhaps they were triggered by a certain personality. Let's say someone was bullied on the schoolyard and they run across a bully, which is probably pretty easy to do in the realty world. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So they, they no longer have an emotional reaction to that bully after going through your program. Let's say, is that the idea? And then they can step into more handling them with confidence, with ease, being able to let it go when they go home at night. Well, I'll give is, you an example that kind of speaks to, to your question um, so one realtor in particular was really super successful. She was kind of their star on the team and mm -hmm. she mentored a lot of the other ones, but she was also known as the realtor who was kind of, I guess you would say kind of the shark. She was kind of aggressive, let's say assertive, but you know, she was aggressive. She was, she yeah. was you know, and, and this, you know, this is true in, in a lot of fields where the more aggressive, you know, whether it's an attorney, a realtor, what, you know, various fields where that can get you a little further. So this was kind of her, her way. This was her MO. So she's out there, you know, and so in her aggressive nature, she said she used to get kind of frustrated with people because people are vulnerable when they're, well, like for instance, when they're selling their home and they're very attached to their home emotionally, yes. they can feel very vulnerable and feel vulnerable about people coming into their beautiful nest and being critical of it or whatever it might be. And she just didn't have time for that. You know, she, she would get people to just focus, do what they got to do and move on. And she said um, she couldn't believe that although she is still as assertive as she needs to be, she found herself being so much more compassionate. And she said, I think I'm actually better. I think I'm a better salesperson. And she gave the example of this, of, of a client who was selling her mother's home and her mom had just had recently passed, you know, and it, I can't remember now if it was also her childhood home, but she was very attached to her mother's home. And she said, I don't even know if my mom would want me to sell this. Maybe she would want me to keep it in the family somehow, but we can't, we can't, you know, we, how are we going to do that? And, and she was really just struggling with the grief, the grieving, you know, process of the, of her mother's death and now selling the home. And this realtor who said in the past just wouldn't have, wouldn't have really given it much credence, you know, would have maybe acknowledged it and moved mm -hmm. on instead said, and she said, I don't even know where this came from, but instead she said, you know, I just have a sense that your mom, wherever she is right now, is looking down on you with love and knowing that you're just trying to do the best you can. And she knows, you know, and she kind of went on to very, in a very supportive kind of way saying something about your mom wants you to do what you need to do for your family. And she's, she's always going to be around you and here with you. A house is just a house. Her energy will always be with you. And she said she was saying things that she's like, these things are just kind of coming out of my mouth and the client teared up and said, you know, thank you so much. I needed to hear that. I, I can do this. I can do this. Mm -hmm. this is, I need to do this. And she's okay with it. I think you're right. My mom would be okay with it, but I needed to hear it. Wow. Okay. It's not just that they're not triggered or, you know, set off emotionally by somebody else. It's, it's a transformation inside of themselves in terms of being able to relate to People. Right. Yeah. And, and like, even in that case, what, how she used to be triggered was true impatience would come for She just didn't, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, the result of that would have been compassion. 
something she would have had uh, otherwise. Fascinating. That's fascinating. So then you you took that original training and your online program grew out of it. Like, how do we reach all these people? We did. And, and the beauty about our technique is, you know, we, we referred to earlier about these, these small T's that dealing with these early memories and, and during developmental stages. The beauty about our technique, it's very, very short lived experience, but you get to do it in the privacy of your own home. And we have heard over and over again has made such a difference that you're not in a therapist office, you're not having to uh, take time out of your day. You can do it at your convenience, on your time, in your space, which Tracy and I have coined um, your soul space, which is really, mm. really a beautiful term that we came up with to say that's where the that's where this subconscious mind healing takes place, in your soul space. Mm, so a very comfortable space for you. So that's what kind of makes our technique different. And, you know, Kara is the one who had the idea. We were practicing this technique, tweaking it with, you know, with clients in our office, in our offices. And we were saying, how can we just reach more people? And when we started realizing, we found ourselves gravitating away from severe trauma and more towards, I guess you would just call it more personal, I mean, universal personal dynamics, more like universal stuff. Um, we thought it felt like it would be okay to do it online. Kara said, we should deliver this online. And, and if we're not doing the severe trauma, it felt safer. It felt more like, me, I think we could do that. So you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So Because I don't know that you'd want to be you know, directing somebody through more of a severe trauma, like a big T, like Kara called it. Okay, so for severe trauma, you do recommend someone working with the therapist. I agree with okay. so. I mean, maybe yeah. we can eventually get this to a place where we can add severe trauma. I mean, who knows where this could go, right? We're <laughs> yeah, aging yeah. With this all. We researched and found that there's really not much of that type of guided therapy, like a therapeutic technique on the internet. There is a lot of online therapy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, online, you can then have individual sessions with them where there's a lot of good courses, you know, decrease, you know, d- workshops to help you decrease stress that are workshop mm-hmm. courses. But this is a therapeutic technique, you know, developed by two mm-hmm. psychotherapists. So it's a true, it's therapy, but there's not much out like this. You know, again, it's not a course, it's not a workshop, it's a therapeutic guided uh, exercises that you'll go through. So, what yeah. So anyway, we, you know, so that, so that's what we started with is more of these universal things that are a little bit more universal dynamics that we all experience. Wonderful. So can, we're coming near the end of our time. So can you tell listeners how to find you? We would love to, you can find us at soul happy, S O U L happy.com. I love that domain, by the way, and the whole name of the program, <laughs> everything. I was like, ah, they have a great yeah, one. Kira, yeah. Kira just yeah, had that one for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, it's so good. I love when I run across like really good logos, business names, techniques names. Yeah. I love it. It's really nice. All right. So soulhappy.com. And then you also have a podcast. Yeah, also called Soul Happy. We are, we are in the beginning stages of it. We've done maybe what, 10 or 11 mm-hmm. at this point. Um, and we're actually just in the process of rebranding it so that it's also part of our brand of Soul Happy. Wonderful. And when's the book due out? Oh, hopefully soon. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long <laughs> It's also called Soul Happy, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it also is called Soul Happy. Yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's taken us um, many hurdles, but we're getting there. We're very close. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciated you talking about your technique and how you came up with it and the wonderful effects well, of it. Know, Elizabeth, thank you so much for, um, for your time. I mean, anytime we have an opportunity to get our message out and it aligns with someone else's message, we're, we're just thrilled. So yeah, we, we're very grateful to you. Yeah, us. really grateful to come across um, you in this, in this platform. So thank you. Fantastic. It was my pleasure.
I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace.